Hey YouTube, this is Mike, and I just wanted to share a short little snippet from this episode that I really enjoyed. However, if you want to listen to the full episode, either scroll down this post or head to mikejamesreed.com forward slash podcast for the full episode. Thanks and enjoy. See, I think in some ways that's almost a, a dichotomy for a lot of people who may be listening. And I, I certainly, I've had that experience as well. There's like a, a five year or a seven year itch that tends to come over someone based on, depending on whatever they're, they're working in. What do you see that as? Like, what's that a sign of, or what was your experience of, of that? Like if someone's experiencing that itch around their business or, you know, their life where they just feel like they need to make a, a really radical change, is it something that you should always listen to or could it be a signal that's sending you off track? I believe depending on how you feel it, if you're trying to convince yourself intellectually, then you could be off track and it could be you're just about to jump out of something when you're about to really hit success and momentum. But I think typically it is the universe tipping you on the shoulder gently and reminding you that you're out of alignment and that this has been great for a period of time. Do not treat it as a waste of time. Just treat it as a, as a lesson learned, as a, as a, as a, a body of work that, that is going to inform you later in life. But that tip will become a nudge and that nudge will become a kick and that kick will eventually become a sledgehammer and the universe will take you out at the knees if you keep ignoring it. So I would encourage people, if you've got a niche, begin to scratch it at some level and experiment. Sometimes it can be what you're doing and sometimes it can be how you're doing it. So I had a coach recently reach out to me who said to me, he loves his coaching, loves helping people, but um, the challenge is he's just not enjoying it, that the love is gone. And for him, it was he was thinking of just moving away from coaching completely. And what we did was we tracked back that he had built a business on the back of reading a book and going on a, on a coaching program. And he built his whole business on the philosophy of this particular methodology. In other words, if I can just, you know, simplify it, you know, you know, sitting on a beach for seven hours a week and, and, and that's, I'm building his business online. And the more I got to know this young man in a 45 minute phone call, it became very evident to me that this guy is just starving by a lack of human connection. And at the end of the call, I said, listen, I'm not saying it's the, the sole answer, but you simply need to surround yourself with people. You need to do live experiences. And it was interesting. I was pissed off at the time because he turned to me and says, it can't be that easy. I mean, I, I've engaged you to get to the core. It can't be that easy. And the reality is it was. And the reality is it is. What he was doing wasn't the problem. It was how he was doing it. He was starving himself of this deep human spiritual connection through the lens of the work that he did. No wonder he was miserable. No, no matter how many clients he can help online, it was never going to be enough. And by the way, one of the rationales and reasons that we stay are, are a few of them are things like, I don't know what else to do. So I'm going to stay in my widget business. I'm doing this for my kids, which is, it sounds very beautiful and sounds very, you know, even to some extent logical, but in actual fact, what I would love people to do is just make sure that your kids know that you're sacrificing your sanity, your, your, your health, perhaps, perhaps your spiritual uh, essence to do something, you know, for them. And, and maybe they might turn around and say, Hey dad, it, I don't really give a shit. I just want to make sure that when you're on the sideline, watching me kick a soccer ball, that you're not glued to your iPhone or mentally disconnected. And then, you know, there's some of the kind of the common things that we use to stay, or I don't know anything different or this idea. If I turn my back on what I've built over the last five years, then basically you're saying the last five years are, is a waste of time. And I disagree with, with all of those. And I also challenge all of those in, in a very supportive, direct way. What's been your experience of obsession? The reason I ask that is because, you know, I think entrepreneurs particularly can often be described as highly focused and, you know, sometimes even obsessive about their mission and their goals. What's been your experience of obsession in your life? Where, where have you experienced it? Has it been a healthy thing or has it been a, even a destructive thing? Obsession, in my opinion, is driven by attachment um, or it's driven by denial. Um, so, and I've never, ever, ever said that anywhere in the world. It's just coming to me right now. In other words, if someone is trying to push something on you, uh, let's just say you have an ant and she is highly religious and she you know, believes in the Bible and she's just like so focused. But every, every Sunday or every Saturday or every Monday she comes to your house, she doesn't just sit there in the comfort and the belief in her own skin and creates an opportunity. If you have questions you, and, you know, about spirituality or about religion, you can ask her and then she can, you know, feels that you, she invites you into that dialogue. She's too busy kind of pushing her agenda at you. And I see this in entrepreneurship all the time and leadership. 
when they're trying to push you, what it's actually demonstrating, and there's an edge and there's a fine line here, is it's not demonstrating a passion or a, or a sense of belief. It's actually, they're so busy trying to convince you because they're trying to convince themselves. In other words, that aunt probably doesn't believe in God the way she thinks she does or the way she says she does. So the way to fight that, the antidote, which by the way is not the antidote, is to fight it with busyness or overbelief or overcompensation. So I find that people who are obsessed is it's driven by a deep attachment. And secondly, it's 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 an avoidance mechanism. In other words, that I believe in this beyond anything because I cannot even fathom if I took a step back and I actually began to question the very thing I believe, I don't know who I would be. So it's tied into their identity as well. Huh. That's a really interesting distinction. So how would you distinguish obsession and let's say passion? Well, I think obsession is exhausting. And I will put one other thing in the middle there. Excitement runs out and passion never dies. So one of the challenges with that is that I often meet people who go, oh my God, like, you know, so, so th th there's something that is emerging that has been so extraordinary for me to watch as I, as I serve different entrepreneurs around the world is often if they come to me, they're out of alignment in some area of their life within themselves, which we typically they don't, they don't want to talk about because they don't know how to either reference it or they don't want to address it. Number two is they're out of alignment with their loved ones uh, in some capacity and they know it, but typically they want to come to me because they're out of alignment in business. And what I'm finding is that what they're doing is not really firing them up. It's not really the thing. And what happens is we typically jump to the next thing before we've even executed on it, before we've even got clear, we grab hold of it and we become deeply attached to that thing. And what I'm finding is it's not necessarily the thing you're doing right now or the way you're doing it, nor is it the thing you think it is. It's the thing that lies beyond both of those. And the reason that we grab onto the next thing and we become very attached to that is because we're really at some level afraid of what's next, what we're really here to do. And we're afraid of uncovering our truth because if we fail doing the things we're here to do, there's nothing left to hold on to. At least that's the interior conversation that we're having. But the reality is when you discover what you're here to do, and for some that sounds fluffy and cliche and bullshit, but trust me, I don't believe it is. When you discover what that is and you lean into that, I don't think you can fail. So there's a massive distinction between passion, excitement, and obsession. Obsession is exhausting and will run out of energy. And again, it's masking something else. Excitement is short-lived. And if you have an affair, basically with somebody, generally it's driven by excitement because it represents something that you're not receiving at home. Same in business. But passion is a very different thing. The problem with passion is we're now slapping it as a bumper sticker on everything. I'm passionate about wine. I'm passionate about real estate. I'm passionate about bricks. I'm passionate about goldfish. I'm passionate about skydiving. And with respect, I think what we've done is diluted the concept of passion and now it's, 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 and that's why people are becoming so confused. People have 10 or 20 or 30 passions. And I think that's a problem in the world.